guys, how are you guys doing? It is a beautiful Thursday, don't. Well, let's see what's going on with Kendall in the newsroom before we come back and excite your day a little bit. Good morning. The CEO of MSR Media, Philip Martinez, is challenging the CEO of the Citizenship by Investment Programs version of a meeting with him and his lawyers in Washington. Do I look like someone that would put himself in a position to meet a defendant in a RICO lawsuit in U.S. federal court so that then after that, he could turn around and have a different version of what happened or the condition of which he came to see us in D.C.? No, I would never put myself in a position like that, which is why I recorded the entire Zoom call. In the alleged conversation, Martinez mentioned that he explained to the CIU head the reasons he was being named in the lawsuit, as well as other information that he believed both Emmanuel and the Prime Minister should be aware of. According to MSR's head, he also told Emmanuel that if he wanted a full understanding of the situation, he should first discuss it with the Prime Minister before visiting Washington. Walk for the Cure 2024 will be held on October 6th this year. And once again, CIBC First Caribbean is partnering with other sponsors to support Faces of Cancer and the Cancer Society in the work that they do. It is not a, a, an easy journey for persons who have to manage and deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And so part of what we have been aspiring to do is to, to get partners with us who can really share information that would help in terms of how, you know, who and how. And I say that to say, um, you know, we, we're not experts in terms of cancer, as in we, as in CIBC, but um, we believe that the collaborative effort of all in terms of our various partners could have a significant impact. He says that the company sponsors the event by purchasing the t-shirts and providing resources to coordinate the event. Dorothy Phillip, founder of Faces of Cancer, says that the nonprofit has been working with CIBC from the program's inception. Technical teams from the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited or LUSELEC responded to reports of a member of the public uh, sustaining an electrical shock on Tuesday, June 11th in P.I. Chozelle. Based on the preliminary reports, the individual was fatally injured on a construction site while handling a metal object that came into contact with high voltage power lines. Managing Director of LUSELEC, Gilroy Pulte, expressed condolences on behalf of the company. Lucilec is urging members of the public to exercise caution and maintain a safe distance of at least 10 feet from overhead power lines, especially when operating or handling objects. The company says the incident is under investigation. June is World Elder Abuse Awareness Month, and local organization HelpAge is using the month to not only educate people on the topic of elder abuse, but to also increase reporting of elder abuse and to start discussions on how to recognize and prevent this form of abuse. The elderly are faced with tremendous challenges with their health, with loneliness, they have been abundant. And so these abuses can be seen across the island. Um, and and we, we want to raise awareness, not only amongst the elderly, but with the caregivers, the children of the, those um, elderly parents, that they can understand the, um, the needs that the, the elderly has and how to, to reach them. A health fair is scheduled for June 30th at the Leclerc Playing Field and a church service will be held at the Larissus Church of God Seventh Day on June 15th. And these are among activities planned to mark the month of elder abuse awareness. These are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning. Thanks, Kendall. Let's take a break. We're coming right back. Would you believe I never knew who Ted was? <laughs> so... We saw Ted the other day, and I said, but rope him in because we need to find out about AI. Because that's the man, if you ask me. So we roped Ted in, the man on his business, but we pull him over, and he was kind enough to have a chat with us. 
This man named Tom met my life for so long and I've never met him. Ted Sandiford, that is you? Yeah, that is nice me. Nice to meet you. It's quite <laughs> an honor. You have been impacted a lot quite uh, uh, on the island of St. Lucia in so many ways. So I'm very honored to meet you this morning. But we're here to pick your brain because we know the type of technology that you're into creating these artistic things you do. What's, what do you animation. call it? Animation. Animation, yes. Right. But it's computer-like? Computer-derived? Yes, yes. Computer. Right. Now, we want to go with you. have done that. You've done all of that. You understand? You've known. You're known all over for that. With this new insurgent of technology, the AI and all of these things. Now, you're going to help me a little. We don't even understand. Not know what I'm asking you there. But the AI technology and all of these things. How is how how are you? Are you are you into it? Are you? Yes, have you been playing am, around with it? I am into AI. I see AI as a tool, right? Because it it not only helps to get the work done easier, it's your work is done more your work is done more efficiently. So, but I have my concerns. I want to because I I, I say in a man like you go say yeah, but when I hear them things, I get scared. It's a, no, but it's a tool, but I have my concerns. Oh, let, let me explain. So, people coming from our generation, uh -huh. right? We came from this evolution of technology right so we know how to do things from scratch right my concern is for the youngsters now because they are born into it okay right take for example let me just give you an example can you remember 24 numbers on your phone no exactly now when we had the landline we were able I to remember yes i used to remember that's so true. now we had a we have a phone now right we don't need to remember numbers, just go on the person's oh. name and, and so on. So what I am saying is that if these kids are born into this technology already, they won't they won't be using their mind. Yeah, you see, right. when we were we need to remember numbers, these kinds of things. It's actually like exercising our brains right. to remember yeah. and so on. But they are dependent on the machines. Everything ready made for them. Now as a teacher, we have to change the way we assess. Because if we, you see the way the, the essays are and so on, uh -huh. if we assess with essays, they will just go on chat GPT and they will just get that letter generate for you. Because you could tell it, generate an essay in grade, grade 8 language. Like, yeah. Right. And it will just generate that for you. You understand? So we have to change the way we assess, as in encourage more class discussions right. so that we can see that the students actually understand what is being taught through that but people were saying with the with the insurgent of, of ai that you know what oh it's going to be good for our schools and stuff like that. you actually a teacher is is that conversation being had that uh, are, are, are the general body aware that this might be what we are in for and are they are they concerned as you are well like i said i am concerned but i see it as a tool at, at, at the same time so how do you manage so, it how do you balance it we need to educate we need to educate them we need to tell them how to actually use it because they themselves don't even know how to um, speak to the AI because they just generate in general. Because take for example, they, students don't even know how to Google. Now we know how to do research because we were using the library uh -huh. and so on. But they will go on Google and just copy and paste without actually retaining that. So we need to teach our students how to do research properly, right? So they can learn from their research. Sometimes I used to be in the library for a whole day and I'm not, not getting the information that I want, but I am still fed with information. You understand? So, I don't know. It's, it's, it's scary. It's a blessing uh -huh. and scary at the same time. Well, that coming from you make me even more scared. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me even more scared. No, the same way a gun. Uh -huh. A gun is used for good, like uh, you, you, you hunting and so right. on. Right. But how can protection. you? Okay, do you plan to probably do a series like you normally do in 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 education or on that like like one of those little series thing that you do? Did you have that in mind? I have so many storyboards and scripts in my head, but the resources. Uh, nah. So what you need? Let me know. What, what you need? <laughs> tell us. Yeah, we need money. We need some money to get some stuff done here because yeah. I'm scared. Now the thing is with AI, the time that it has to be done can be cut down in half. Right. But we still need resources. We need resources. Yeah. And that's a challenge for you. Yeah. The kids need to be educated. But it's, it's it's vital. We need it, don't we? We do need it. We do need it. In this ever-changing world. I mean, a smartphone is being... A new smartphone is coming out every year. That's I mean, that's an iPhone 12. I'm outdated. You're outdated. Right now it's the iPhone 15. <laughs> And iPhone 15, like, I mean, come on. It's right. AI powered already, so. Right. But here I was thinking that this man will be in his glory because that's right up his alley. Um, I am but, in my glory, but. 
but you it, it, you are also acknowledging that you have to be very like with everything else mm -hmm. you've got to be be mindful that you know it, it has its ups and it has its downs exactly. i like the fact that you alluded to that and coming from yes. you i guess it makes sense now thank you we rob you of your time but thank you so much for stopping off and and, and having that conversation with us right, no hopefully problem. we'll be able to tap into your energy again sometime soon maybe no when we get somebody to say well all right have some money there for you so <laughs> let me call let me start the thing yeah all right, cool. <laughs> but you don't do you don't do things like that you don't look for funding for executing these things because what you do is vital you know yeah well, yeah i well let I... me beg for you <laughs> we need some money to do some projects over here so if you're interested call me i go i go i go talk to ted you understand? And we're going to make it happen. No, that's on a serious note, though, because these things are vital. And, and like you said, we, we we might just be operating in the scene and don't realize that we, we have things that we need to address while we jump into the pot. Yes, yes, yeah. indeed. All right. All right. Ted, how we can follow you? Mm. How we can follow Ted? Anybody don't know how to follow Ted? <laughs> <on>. Bye. <laughs>
it really helps that aspect of my business because it's not, like you said, it's not really about beauty. It's just ensuring that health-wise, mentally as well, that they're taken care of. Wow. Yes. And you seem to be quite passionate about that. I do. I love, <laughs> I love the elderly. I love the disabled. Um, they're no less than us, and I feel that they're family. They are family to Blissful Escape. Wow. Yes. But how do you, so how do you now um, manage? Because that's quite a lot. I mean, being a, a, um, aligned to, that, to the NIC in that regard, and then to also maintain your own personal space as well. So is it a lot? It's quite demanding. Um, it is a lot, um, but thankfully, I have Tama, which is my assistant. So when I'm out there, Tama is holding the fort in there, so you don't miss out. You can catch Blissful Escape on the go or in-house. Right. Now, in-house, let's talk about in-house, because I know we saw me about on the show, stay there, but you will break it down as to the exact place. Okay, so we're located on the show, say, um, to most people, the building is called the Richelos Building, so I'm downstairs. The part that is facing opposite the health center, blue building right there. Um, to some other persons, they would take it as the West Tech building. So I'll just tell them the West Tech building, but we're taking the part that is facing um, the health center, same blue building. The sign is on the door so you don't miss out. Right. What's your opening hours and, and your scheduling like? Um, so we're open Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> that is a businesswoman. <laughs> wow. But by appointments, um, we do try to cater in walk-ins, but strictly by appointments, because again, we do house call services, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, holidays and Sundays, we'll do half day, but um, we're talking Mondays to Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and we try to take care of many, many persons as possible. Right. So are you on social? Are you on the social side? Oh, yes. We're on Facebook. We're on um, Instagram. Um, so you can catch us at, on Instagram, it would be blissful underscore spa 758. Um, same thing for Facebook. Well, I think Facebook would be blissful escape spa. You can't miss it. All right. Yes. Well, we commend you and we wish you the best uh, moving forward. And what you're doing is quite noble and you get to do it whilst you're fulfilling your passion as well. So that's a good thing. Thank All the you. best. Thank you very much. <laughs> quite interesting but he has he has something you know he has a passion he has a dream and I believe he's got the skills as well you know but he's just needs somebody to give him a chance you know to, to, to better him but better him a little bit here's gladly here's his story this awesome gentleman from the community of Deriso and this gentleman has got a, a, a gift a passion and you know we, we just wanted to tap into that a little bit because he has been experimenting with some of his his designs to date um, and his name is Cladley this is the gentleman right here Cladley welcome we are honored yes. to have you yes nice to be here right tell me a little bit about yourself um, you definitely into technology and you've been doing quite a lot in terms of trying to you know build stuff build engine and these kinds of things um, what draw you into that what made you go into that direction Ever since I was very young, I was exposed to um, technology through the television. Mm -hmm. I would spend hours and hours watching scientific channels, such as National Geographic, History Channel, all of these others. Right. And they taught me a lot in terms of geometry, maths, and because it was, it teaches you facts about the world. Mm -hmm. In terms of history, Michelangelo, great people in the past who have done many things. Right. And I studied it, I went to school, I studied technical subjects, which I really love. And from these technical subjects, I began to explore in what I can do and how I can use my skills to basically develop a product. And after slowly trying to learn all what I learned, because I have to be at work and doing things, I would always sketch out every new idea I would have. And I said one day maybe I would develop it and build it, but in this type of environment right now, it is very difficult. I've been to many people trying to get them to understand my situation and how I can um, 
you know, change up and develop these um, engines. It's quite costly to, to, to experiment with these sort of things. So we're talking um, pumps, water pumps. We're talking engine for, for vehicles, um, ski jets, engines. You're big on this. You, you're talking some big stuff here. Yeah, it, it's big. It sounds big to you, but me being very um, exposed to it over the years, all this technology is simple, but the point of building these technologies, you need to have the right equipment. The larger you have to build, the larger that your is equipment what I'm have talking to be. About. That's yeah. what I'm talking about when I said big, because you need capital, you would need the right, um, um, like you said, the equipments to be able to build these things proper. That's what we're looking at. And right now you are stuck because you do not have the resources to, to further um, that talent that, you, that you've been honing for the last how many years? Yes, it's been ever since um, 17 years when I designed my first actual engine and I waited until I could have finally been able to build it. Mm -hmm. But so far I have not built it a working prototype. So what I'm trying to do right now is to pursue patenting and uh, in St. Lucia it's still difficult to get the right um, group of people to help me with the patenting for now. Right. So basically, you're looking for assistance to be able to help you, like you said, patent so that you could you could go ahead and explore and make sure that your your ideas and your your yes. skills is protected whilst you explore and you you probably go to other persons um, that way you can actually try out some of your your designs. Right. That would really be good because right now it's not I'm not the only one, and it's very possible to manufacture the technology I have designed. Uh -huh. I'm not the only one developing engines, uh -huh. so having a patent would protect me in this um, type of industry right. and it would help me to move forward. Right. So where are you at right now and what would you hope to, to accomplish right now? What would you like assistance with at this point? Basically, um, in the past I have worked with CAD, which is computer-aided design. Uh -huh. I've designed about three engines on CAD. But from CAD, there is um, transforming it from CAD to G-code, and you send the G-code to these machines called computer numerical control machines. Mm -hmm. And basically, what I want to do is to get so, uh, sorry, um, good quality CNC machines that can handle the sort of work and the sort of pressure that is required to build the engines. Right, so you're stuck at that. So you're looking to read some funds maybe to, to pump into that so you could be able to take it to the next level. How, how passionate are you? How, what, what, is that your, your dream? That is what's going to fuel you? That is what you believe that you were created to do? Um, I believe uh, I still designing engines and building it is not really my ultimate goal. Right. It's just um, along the way because I've designed many products this is just the engine um, aspect of the products that I've designed. Right. And I would like to bring down forward because it would really help in making a difference in our use of fuel and how um, fuel efficiency of vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, although all manufacturers are getting closer and closer to more efficient technology, mm -hmm. I believe what I have achieved would help in getting the whole world closer to a more efficient engine. Right. So basically, anybody within that field can reach you how? Well, I have created an email called um, engineinterest at gmail.com. I can also be contacted at 725-4087, um, right. 7587254087. This is my business number. Right. Um, that's about it right now. Right. Give the email address again. Engineinterest at gmail.com. Right. Engineinterest at gmail.com. Right. Yeah. Gladly. Well, we hope that somebody out there is viewing and, and, and they can, you know, help you to the next level and the next step of that. We would like to see you realize yeah. um, that dream. Why not? Have a, have a good, good technological guy from, from the little island of St. Lucia. We might just be seeing that in this gentleman right here. So if you're out there and you, you're interested in helping this young man realize his dream, then that might be a good time to send him an email or give him a call. That is our show for today. We're going to be doing it again tomorrow, but for today, go on out and be great, be awesome, and enjoy your Thursday to the absolute fullest.